Peter Aloysius Chanel was born in 1803 in the rural village of Couet, France. He was the fifth child of eight, born to Claude and Marie Anne Chanel. Like his siblings, he was consecrated to the Virgin Mother at birth, and he spent his early years helping his parents on their farm. The local parish priest noticed Peter's intelligence and devotion to Jesus and arranged for him to go to a Catholic school. Peter loved to read and was inspired by the lives of French foreign missionaries. By the time he made his first communion at the age of 14, he had already decided to become a priest and a missionary. He served at Mass, began learning Latin, and accompanied the priest taking the Blessed Sacrament to the sick and dying. When Peter was 15, he was tempted to abandon his studies and return home. On his way, he met the schoolmistress, who asked, Have you at least prayed to the Virgin Mary? He turned around, prayed beneath the statue of Mary and the child Jesus in the church, and changed his mind about heading home. Peter entered the seminary, and his teachers and classmates were all drawn to his simple faith. After his ordination, he wished to begin mission work, but that was not yet God's plan. The bishop sent him to a failing church where the former priest had alienated many of the parishioners. Peter regained their trust just by being the pious, loving, and unassuming man that he always was. He began reaching out to the poor and sick in the community. After three years, the parish was thriving again, but Peter still felt a tug in his heart to the missions. At the age of 28, he discovered the newly found Missionary Society of Mary. He asked for permission to enter, and it was granted. Sure that he would be sent to Oceania, the special mission field entrusted to the order, his expectations were again tempered by God's will. His superior, Father Colin, asked him to become the director of the local seminary. He obediently accepted and for five years worked at a job that he never truly felt suited for. Finally, Peter's dream of mission work was about to become reality. In December 1836, he was chosen to be part of the first group of Marist priests to depart for the Pacific. Little did he know how perilous or long the journey would take. Bad weather, a damaged ship, delays, and dysentery made the trip a grueling ten months. Sadly, one of Peter's best friends, Father Brett, contracted a serious illness and died at sea. Peter had to have been disheartened but his purpose burned deeply in his heart to serve and bring souls to Christ. He focused on others, ministering to the sailors and other passengers, praying and preparing for Easter communion. Peter and his fellow missionary, Brother Marie Nizier, arrived on Futana Island, where they established themselves after obtaining the permission of King Niuliki. War between rival tribes and the practice of cannibalism had reduced its population to a few thousand. The pagan religion of the natives was focused on appeasing angry gods. Neoliki declared cannibalism illegal, but many superstitions still remained. At first, he welcomed the missionaries because he believed they would bring him riches. Peter and Brother Marie Nizier set about the difficult task of learning the native language and customs. Their first home was a hut made of coconut leaves interlaced with tree trunks. After two months, it fell apart from rain. Peter labored night and day to serve both the spiritual and temporal needs of the natives. From his farming years, he taught them how to work the land, plant trees, and raise domestic animals. He attended the sick, baptized the dying, and faithfully taught them through his words and example the truth of a loving God. Brother Marie Nizier said of Father Peter, Because of his labors, he was often burned by the heat of the sun and famished with hunger. He would return home wet with perspiration and completely exhausted. Yet he always remained in good spirits, courageous and energetic. Peter traveled the island in every direction without rest, confronting hardship with patience and generosity. The natives began to call him the man with the kind heart. Conversions, though, were slow, due partially to the counter witness by some other Europeans trading in the area. One person that was very moved by the Catholic faith he saw in Peter was the king's son, Maitala. When Maitala asked to be baptized, the king became jealous of the missionary's influence and planned to get rid of them. Brother Marie Nizier was away when word reached Peter of the threat to his life. 
Despite the few converts Peter saw for all his labor and the impending price he would pay with his life, his faith was unshaken. It does not matter whether or not I am killed. The religion has taken root on the island. It will not be destroyed by my death, since it comes not from me, but from God. At daybreak on April 28, 1841, Niuliki's prime minister, Musumusu, and fellow conspirators burst into Peter's hut and severely beat him with clubs. The final blow was administered by Musumusu himself, a strike to the head with an adze. Peter's dying words were in the Futana language. My lay fuai, it is well for me.